A portion of this video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Here in today's Let's Edit tutorial, I thought I would show you how I went about creating this sort of gold and green color tone for this pine cone image. And I'm also gonna do a little bonus and show you how to do an oil painting by using Photoshop, just to kind of give your photo a little bit more of a creative feel to it if you want to go that far. As you can see with our image, we have a significantly darker middle on our pine cones here. And that's because the background had a lot of highlights. So I didn't want to overexpose my highlights, but at the same time, I didn't want to underexpose my shadows to where I didn't have enough detail to bring that back. So the first thing that I want to do here is add in my radial filter. And this is how we're going to get our pine cones to really pop in our image. So that way we can see the detail better. So I selected the radial filter mask here and we're just gonna highlight this area that we want to work within. And so adjust it accordingly. So I kinda wanna turn it a bit so that way I catch this pine cone directly in the center, as well as the one that's sort of out of focus behind it. So we got that positioned. And now all I'm going to do is just adjust the shadows and we're going to bring that all the way up to 100. And that looks good. I know everything at the start might not look the most flattering, but it's all going to come together. So let's adjust this a little bit so that way the light actually covers all of the pine cone. And that looks really good. So we'll close that and carry on. Now, the thing that I'm going for for this image is sort of a watercolor combination with a gold tone look. So for my white balance, we're just going to take it a little bit cooler than what it was shot in. And so just make it a little bit more blue, a little bit, not too much. And then for our tint, we want to go a little bit more towards the green. That will start giving us a little bit more of that watercolor look. So I'm going to come in and dial in about a 14. So it takes out a little bit of that purple tint, adds in a little bit of green. So in my basics panel, what I want to do is bring my highlights all the way down. And as you can see, we brought back some of the detail in our branches that are out of focus in the background. For my shadows, I want to take that all the way up to 100. Now it look, looks like a terrible photo. Trust me, it's all going to come together. For my whites, I also want to bring that up quite a bit as well. But for my blacks, we want to bring back some of that contrast level. So that's where the black adjustment will come in. So we'll bring this down quite a bit. And that looks pretty good. As far as for texture and clarity, since we have this pine cone image and you know, it's got some very rugged areas to it, I don't mind adding a little bit of texture and clarity. So we're going to go up quite a bit on texture as well as our clarity, just to really bring out some of those edges in our photo. Next, let's come down to our tone curve. Now I'm going to use a preset that I have already for my point curve. So we'll select this linear to bring up our drop down menu. And I'm going to utilize my skyline curve strong preset. So once we've done that, we'll go back to the parametric curve. And then I want to bring down my darks and increase my shadows here. So we're going to bring down the dark and then increase my shadows about 50%. That's pretty good. And then we'll make some of these adjustments on our point curve here. And so as you can see, see how we already start having that watercolor as we go along with our image. The next part that we're going to work on is our HSL panel, where we're gonna do some manipulation to some of the colors. So as you can see, the image is starting to come along nicely, and we're going to continue our editing tutorial after this brief message about our sponsor of this video. I've shared throughout the past year about PPA and the available education and training resources, along with small business and studio resources for contracts, copyright, and marketing. This month, they wanted me to share about their $15,000 equipment insurance that's included with a full PPA membership. Things just got better as they've recently updated this benefit to offer full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible 
or you can repair your equipment with a flat $50 deductible. A full replacement equipment insurance policy, data loss recovery services, and education are all included in the full membership. Take a look at the link in the description and use the code for a special discount on your membership. Let's start making our HSL adjustments here. So we're going to just focus on our colors that we have in our image, which are our aqua, our green, our yellow, and our orange. Those are our focus colors here. So what I want to do is make my yellow have a little bit of green. So as you can see, the yellow is more on the tips of the pine cones here. So I want to have kind of like if a, a woman is painting their nails where you just paint the tips. That's what I want to have that kind of effect on the pine cones here. So that's why I'm slightly adjusting my yellows. So we'll back off on that a little bit, do about 20. For the green, we'll zoom out here. For green, we're going to take this all the way to the left. What I'm doing here is sort of blending significant amount of like gold tone colors as well as the green tones. That way at the end, everything will come together nicely. So for our aqua, we'll go more towards our sort of greenish side as well. And that looks pretty good. So then next for our saturation, we'll increase a little bit of our orange a little bit of our yellow, but then we'll take out a little bit of the green and we'll do the same for our aqua as well. As far as our luminance, we'll increase slightly our orange, our yellow and our green. And then for the blue, let's bring that down because that'll be our sky region here that's sort of kind of blown here. We'll bring that down just to kind of tone it down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. And then next we'll come down to my favorite of Lightroom now, the color grading. Now, what I want to do here, however, is I want to keep the color grading panel utilizing what it used to be in the previous versions known as the split toning. So to do that, we're going to select the blending and take our blending all the way to 100. So now it's going to function like how it used to in the previous generations of Lightroom. So all I want to adjust here are my shadows and my highlights. So let's select our shadows. And what I want to do is add in that warm element here with the color grading. So as you can see, we have that nice watercolor, but we kind of want to balance it out a little bit. We don't want it to be as harsh as it is right now. But of course, you can, if you like that look, you can keep that and proceed on. So what I want to do is add a little bit of warmth. So we'll go into our warm colors here and we'll just add a little bit of saturation. And this is applied to our shadows. And then I'll select my highlights and we're going to do the same here. But this time for my saturation, we're going to bring that up quite a bit. And that looks pretty good. I think we'll do about 40. Maybe we can back off a little bit. Let's do 35. Okay. So then next for my balance, we're going to bring that down to about negative 30%. And that looks good. So the next what I want to do is come down to my post crop vignette. This is where we're really going to start seeing this photo really coming together. So let's start our amount off and we're going to go to about negative 50%. For our midpoint, we're going to bring that all the way in. But then for our feather and our highlights, we're going to bring those to 100. So the feather kind of opens up that midpoint a little bit and gives a more even balance from those darker areas as I brought in the vignette going into the, the center of our image. And then with the highlights, it basically recovers the highlights on the edge to where it sort of darkened that. So that way we have that full light again. So that's what you would use that for. And that looks very, very good. So, and that's it. Very simple, very basic. And we have that sort of nice balance between a nice little green and a little bit of gold tones in there. Very, very nice. We're going to export our image from here and then hop in to Adobe Photoshop and do a few adjustments there. We've now brought our image into Adobe Photoshop and I'm gonna show you just two things that we're going to do to kind of add a little bit of more creativity to our image. So the first thing I want to do is my infamous favorite, adding a lens flare. And that really is going to add a nice little element to the photo. So what I want to do is go to filter, then render, lens flare, and Position it anywhere that you want. Because we have this sort of open white area of the highlights of our, of our sky there, it's very easy to do for this particular image because of that. So what I want to do is kind of position it off to the sort of right 
top corner of the pine cone about right there to where it's like hitting a little bit on that pine cone. That looks good. So let's select OK. And there's our lens flare. But what I want to do is undo that. So we're going to come up to edit, undo, and then I'm going to create a fill layer. So we'll do a new fill layer, solid color. We'll click OK. And we want this to be black, which it is. Then I'm going to recall that lens flare. So just come up to filter. And since that's the last adjustment that you did within the filter, you just select lens flare here. So once we've done that, I'm going to go back to filter. We're going to do a blur with a Gaussian blur to kind of soften that a bit. So that way it kind of blends more, more nicely. So once we've done that, we'll hit OK. Then you'll come over to your layers panel over here on your right. Where it says normal, we're going to select that drop down menu and then select screen. Once we've selected screen with that layer still selected, then you can adjust your opacity based on how much you want that to really pop in your image. It's up to you. So I'm going to do about 50 or so percent. That's a nice balance. So what I like to do, I know a lot of people like to work with layers in Photoshop. I'm not one of those. So once I've done that with this layer, what I do is right click on any of the layers and then simply flatten the image. And then I'll proceed on with my adjustments. Just to add a little bit of final contrast since we've added that lens flare in, I'm gonna do a few adjustments to our levels as well as our curves. So I have these preset options already that will just give me a little bit more in my shadow areas and kind of darken the image a little bit more. I'll use my custom five and as you can see, we added a little bit of contrast there. And then I'll come back and go to curves and do the same thing here with one of my presets. Once you've done that, that would be the end of this image. But this looks really, really cool. Like it looks like a very dreamy like photo. Let's take it a step further and do something creative. Let's make it an oil painting. How are we going to do that? We're going to come back to filter and we're going to do stylize and select oil paint. So once we've done that, you can adjust this on how extensive you want the effect to look. If you don't want it to be as strong as it is right now, you can bring your stylization down to a point one. But for this image, I really want it to look like a painting. So I'm going to take it all the way to a 10. And you know, you can adjust the, the lighting, you know, the shine of the image as where as you kind of see these little artifacts in the, the image there. And so I'm going to just, just simply click OK. And then look at this. Isn't this nice looking as we have this this sort of gorgeous looking oil painting of our photograph. So once we've done that, we'll just simply export our photo and that is it. So hopefully this tutorial was very helpful or enlightening to you. Try out some of these features that I showed you. If, there are things that you've never explored in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. Play around with it for your photos and see how it works. Of course, you don't have to follow every single step that I showed you exactly. Adjust things, tweak things to make it work for your image or based on how you feel about that image. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Remember to take a look at the link in the description and use the code for a special discount to a PPA membership. And as always, you can check out all of my blogs and articles at professorhines.com and you can find my presets for Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop in my store on my website as well. So until next time, I will see you all in the next video.